Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and people today I'm gonna explain how to create a very smart uh, gallery oblique zoom effect uh, without using any plugin. So as always let's have a browser preview. We have four pictures out here. Uh, they've been set absolute in a relative wrapper and see what happens as I click on the different images they expand cover the rest of the thumbs they also do a subtle fade in and also throw in uh, some box shadow okay so it's a toggle effect guys uh, the first time I click uh, it expands in size it fades in while the three others actually fade out so while one is expanding and fading in uh, the rest three are actually fading out so this this there is a toggle functionality out here you can call it a, a, a gallery or a zoom effect all right uh, so let's see how this was actually accomplished wasn't uh, too easy either wasn't too difficult either so let's see how this was actually done uh, let me also show you the local site folder and uh, this contains the four images cherry jpg mangoes orange strawberry all of them share the same size and the same uh, jpeg format uh, the size is 800 width 500 uh, height so this is the physical jquery library latest minified version this is the custom written zoom.html this is where all most of the hard work uh, actually went and is the core file is the main file right so let's bring up Sublime Text 3 uh, which I've used as the editor. This is the HTML document which is tied uh, zoom.html uh, zoom is tied to the zoom.js file as I said is the uh, is where the main hard work and the logic actually was poured in and this is the HTML document. If you see the style tags are empty the body tags are empty as well lines 13 and 14 actually tie up with the latest jQuery uh, minified version and zoom.js custom written JavaScript file right so <coughs> as I said let's see how this was actually done I'm gonna push in uh, some code slowly okay first things first inside the opening closing body tags I've pushed in a division with a class of rel divisions are block level elements classes can be used multiple times on the same page the same class name okay so class of rel next uh, I push in four pictures inside the division with the class rel cherry jpg orange jpg strawberry jpg mango jpg although the original size is 800 width and uh, 500 height through the width and the height attributes uh, I have shrunk them in size to their one fourth size one fourth of uh, 800 is 200 of height uh, 500 is 125 and I, I have also given them classes cherry orange strawberry and mangoes respectively okay let's bring in some more code actually nothing but some lorem ipsum some text filler okay if at this point I were to save the document up bring the browser up and if I were to refresh guys you'll see that uh, I have four pictures uh, lined next to each other since the images are actually inline elements. Cool. And uh, obviously, uh, the text filler, the lorem ipsum, is in the is uh, soon thereafter. Okay. So let's bring in some more code okay now this is the first rule that I pushed in the opening closing style text rel rel was the division if you remember the division had a class of rel so I'm setting the width to a 410 the height to a 260 a position to a relative the width and the height uh, has been um, kept at 410 260 keeping in size of the thumbs so width wise we're gonna uh, push in two thumbs these images are actually gonna act as thumbs 200 uh, width height 125 so 200 plus 200 is 400 plus uh, some gutter or some gap between the two images so that's 10 pixels 410 
260 is the height 125 plus 125 is 250 plus uh, 10 px of gutter okay uh, position relative so let's see if this actually impacts the browser preview I don't think so oh it does actually but well, that's because um, you know we have constrained the width right let's bring in the next code so I'm saying all the images inside the rel class should uh, gather a position of absolute basically all the four images so let's see how this impacts did I actually save the document I don't think so file and save bring the browser up and let's do a refresh yeah so this was expected the fourth image actually is on the top when you set all the images to absolute they tuck themselves in a relative wrapper in the top left corner always and they superimpose they are actually overlapping each other now it's a pile it's a stack although it doesn't seem so it seems as though the three images have actually disappeared they have not it's become a pile now okay uh, let's bring in the next rule then next uh, few rules next three rules since it's a pa uh, you know it's it's a pile now it's a stack I want to separate them using the left handle top property so orange uh, the class which was given to the orange image now has a left of 210 strawberry has left 0 top 135 mangoes uh, gets a left of 210 and top 135 let's save and let's see how the images are now separate okay as expected they have been separated using the left uh, and the top properties left top uh, bottom and right properties uh, or positions can be used only when you set the elements anything but static right so uh, I think that that was probably the last rule was it uh, I guess that was the width uh, what was the width again I why did I mess with the width what was the width again 410 okay let's set it back to 410 so guys this was the HTML of the document and uh, I'm gonna soon join you in the next part or rather you should be joining me in the next part to understand how the JS was actually written and I hope you will do that so guys you have a good day bye bye peace welcome back to part 2 people and let's see how the jQuery or the JavaScript was actually written so we are inside the zoom.js file so when the document is actually ready and the DOM has initialized and the elements are actually accessible okay this is what we are gonna write so we're declaring a, a variable counter and setting it to 0 next uh, I add a click event handler to the children of the rel division now the only division that the HTML has has a class of rel and the children inside are basically cherry orange strawberry and mangoes uh, JPEG files so basically attaching the click handler to the different uh, images okay next people uh, when somebody actually clicks I increment the counter by one right next I push in an if conditional so if this is true then execute this uh, I'm actually uh, checking if the counter divided by two fetches me a remainder of one so once when you click it'll do that the other time it will not so that's like a alternate behavior if that becomes true then do this so this dot animate dot width and height uh, basically which was um, 200 125 will reset it back to the bigger size the original uh, size of the image is 800 500 okay so the images were actually smaller because they were constrained because of width and height attributes they have been uh, they, they animate back to their original size that's the first thing and then we put a comma out here and then I'm actually calling in a callback function so once the width and the height attributes animate back to their original size through the CSS method I'm throwing in a box shadow of 50 px spread all around okay let's see if, if at this point I can actually see any browser preview let's bring the uh, browser up let's do a reload and if I click yep see the code is only half pushed in so this was expected okay fine so you see 
the picture enlarges animates and throws a box shadow all around very cool let's get the JS file back and bring in some more code okay next what I'm saying is uh, when you're actually ex when you have done uh, you know when you're actually expanding make sure that the sibling so the other three images should fade out also uh, the one that actually expands this refers to the one that actually expands the one that was actually clicked through the CSS method should be tucked in the top left corner top zero left zero left zero top zero rather okay so let's save this and let's see if I can get a browser preview now refresh top left corner right top left corner and the other three images actually fade out the small thumbs actually fade out okay right let's bring in some more code uh, I'm uh, throwing in an if conditional now, uh, else uh, else condition now. So, if this is not true, if the counter module operator two does not uh, fetch your remainder of one, because with one click it will, with the other click it will not. Else, what you should do? Else, make sure that the image that is clicked through the CSS method shrink it back to the uh, 225 size, show the siblings, and uh, remove the box shadow. So let's save. Right. Let's bring the browser up. Right. Let's click away. And let's click back. Click away. Click back. Click away. Click back. Click away. Click back. Actually, they all hide themselves uh, in the top left corner. And that is the uh, issue why, you know, you can see only one right now. So we're going to soon fix that. Bring in some more code. So I'm saying if the image that was clicked is orange, then make sure that the left is to 10. Basically, I'm making sure that they go back to their original, this snap back to their original positions only. Next, I'm saying else if the image is strawberry, then uh, left should be 0, top should be 135. Or else if it's uh, the picture is actually mango, the image that was clicked is mangoes, the left should be 210, the top should be 135. I think that is the last uh angles right so that should be the uh final product as simple as that bam bam click 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 uh working cool isn't it so there's a fade in um the images enlarge and shrink in a toggle manner Okay, so all working cool, all working nice. So people, I hope you found this uh, information useful. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Peace.